This video is brought to you by Soundcore. I've been an iPad user for the longest of time and as such, regular viewers have probably witnessed my emotions when it comes to the iPad struggling to be a decent laptop replacement. We've all fantasized about the iPad being able to run Mac OS and that very fantasy, in fact, led me to try the Surface Pro 9. A beautiful 2-in-1 that runs a fully-fledged Windows operating system that in theory should serve both the tablet and laptop worlds perfectly. So about two months ago, I pulled the plug and purchased the Intel Evo i7 version with 16GB of RAM and 256GB SSD. In this video, I'll tell you what I like. You have to get used to the frequent restarts on Windows. And don't like about the Surface Pro 9 and share with you my verdict as to whether or not I will keep it. As someone who's used to using a Mac, the first thing I did on the Surface Pro Apollo setup was to install an app called SharpKey. Now this is a little utility app that allows Windows to remap one key to another. In my case, I'm remapping the control key and switching with the Alt key to simulate the command location on my Mac. This is not a perfect solution, keep in mind, as I now need to figure out how to fix my Alt tab situation, since at this point, it's a control tab situation. So to set the scene, let me share with you my hopes and expectations upon purchasing it and the reality. To me, the purpose of a 2-in-1 in my EDC is to do everything else besides video editing, something that I do on my Mac. The 2-in-1 for me should be a compact, elegant and inspiring machine that I can use for running my business, maybe have occasional fun and most of all, right. Almost all these boxes are ticked by the Surface Pro 9 with flying colors. I absolutely love the deep black color and minimal Windows logo on the kickstand alongside the satin finish. Despite really wanting the just as black Microsoft Surface Signature keyboard, I couldn't get my hands on that specific color so I settled with the platinum color which is more like a gray one which I will talk more about in a bit. I think having 50 shades of grey contrast between the tablet and the keyboard turned out to be the better option at the end of the day. The weight and footprint of the entire package to me is ideal as I can squeeze it in any of my backpacks or slings or simply carry it as is. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Unlike my iPad Pro, the built-in Windows Hello Face Authentication camera is located at the right place, since the device is meant to be used horizontally for the most part. This is my first opportunity to work with Windows Hello, by the way, and I have to say I'm really impressed at how well it works. The front-facing camera of the Surface Pro 9 is actually very good. I'm impressed at how well it looks, despite the changing conditions here. In terms of microphone quality, I leave that to you to decide. Let me know in the comments what you think and how it sounds. Where I'm impressed the most in terms of ergonomics and productivity in this package is the typing experience. With an asterisk. As someone who writes like crazy, it is an absolute joy to generate thousands of words on the signature keyboard. The clever mounting solution for elevating the rear portion of the keyboard while hiding the pen is just genius. But this is where things fall apart. See, the Surface lineup is a leader when it comes to the built-in kickstand. It is super sturdy and firm, boasting plenty of confidence as long as you use the Surface, well, on a Surface. Just like I mentioned in my favorite iPad accessories video, which I'll link below, this kickstand slash detachable keyboard is not a good combo for the lap use, no matter the manufacturer. The Surface in particular makes it even more difficult since the kickstand is as sharp as a dull kitchen knife which initially might not seem like a problem, let's say in the winter, but if you wear shorts in the summer, its sharpness results in slow but guaranteed painful experience on top of the inevitable wobbly shakiness. Honestly, this is a problem for me because for the most part, writing is done everywhere else besides on a desk, pretty much where inspiration strikes. Moving on. Aside from conducting business and writing, to me a 2-in-1 should also be great for entertainment. Watching videos like this one or streaming a TV show or a movie and maybe, you know, reading a book. Right off the bat, let me just say that this display is simply gorgeous. It is super sharp with a resolution of 2880 by 1920 featuring dynamic refresh rate up to 120 Hz. Although it is not mega bright as the competition, it is good enough for 95% of my needs and yeah. 
I really enjoy working on it. Pairing that with the Dolby Atmos speakers and I really have nothing to complain about. The speakers sound plenty loud no matter the volume and they provide decent clarity and punch for the moments with no headphones. So right now we are at 50% volume so let's give it a try and then turn it up. I know for a fact that older models of the Surface used to feature a 3.5mm headphone jack, but not this latest model. This is a bit sad, but I would pick wireless headphones any day anyway. Talking about wireless headphones, which also work wired by the way, let me show you the latest Soundcore Space One pair. This lightweight pair in the sky blue color is absolutely beautiful, featuring adaptive noise cancelling with powerful voice reduction, where it detects external sounds and sound leakage. Noise cancelling. auto calibrating to deliver optimal noise reduction. The ear cups on the Space One are super soft and rotate 8 degrees in either direction to conform to the contours of any head. In terms of sound, they offer 40mm customized dynamic drivers supporting LDAC for high-res wireless audio. Of course, thanks to the latest Bluetooth technology, a multi-point connection is something to expect. With the help of the Soundcore app, there are EQ settings galore including 5 transparency modes. Regarding battery, you can expect 55 hours hours with ANC off where 5 minutes of charge will help you gain 4 hours of listening time. Turn down the crowd with Soundcore Space One by following the first link in the description below. So in terms of reading, things are a bit weird and I'm not talking about the lack of decent Windows apps that exist for that purpose like on Android tablets or the iPad. Things are weird because the Surface might decide not to even rotate in vertical mode, which is typically what I use to read. If it decides to rotate, it does that with the speed of a dial-up connection. So we're all used to how long it takes for a regular tablet to rotate in vertical mode. Usually, you know, it's a very fluid motion that you can hardly confuse and it's very, very snappy. Now with the Surface Pro, things are a little bit more complicated because, ah, there it is. It takes a while. See, that questionable behavior resonates throughout my overall experience of this device, most noticeably when I decided to use it as a tablet. Things get a little bit, you know, irritating when the software keyboard does not show up at all, even after a restart. It's kind of embarrassing. Missing features like the tap to wake or the time that it takes for the surface to wake up after a deep sleep really questions the usability of this device as a tablet, especially if we take a look at the competition. Before I get to my final expectations of a 2-in-1, I have to mention the Surface Pen. Since I love to draw and create things like my wallpaper packs, this carpenter style pen is an absolute joy to use and when switched to 120Hz, the experience of drawing and writing on the Surface is just fantastic. I still geek out about the inductive charging solution in the keyboard, cocooning the pen and protecting it from the elements. So I don't know if I got spoiled by using the iPad Pro for years, but my biggest expectation for the Surface Pro was to be close to good enough to last me a day as a device that I can use as a tablet and a computer. According to Microsoft materials, the Intel version of the Surface Pro 9 should last up to 15 hours of typical device use. Pretty much all my expectations and examples I've showed you so far. Even at half of that, I'd be pleased. But hear me out. An hour of writing in Notion while using Google Chrome for research on this device after being unplugged and at 100% battery life took a 25% toll. After a fresh restart in the evenings, I could watch two 15-minute episodes of my favorite show before I approach the halfway mark. As I showed you in my latest EDC video, the problem is that the Surface Pro's fans are always kicking in even while sleeping and charging. Right now the Surface Pro is charging. I'm not 
doing anything on it. Yet I can still hear the fans. As you can imagine, all that constant cooling generates a lot of heat, which in the lab or, you know, in a bed situation becomes kind of annoying at some point, essentially eliminating the possibility of wanting to use this thing as a tablet. It's not all bad though. One of my favorite things about the Surface Pro 9 is the easy access and upgradability of the SSD. Now, such drives don't offer the fastest speeds out there like the baked ones, but this thing is no slouch either, and I can only wish other followed, you know, this trend. So currently my configuration i7 plus 16GB of RAM and 256GB SSD is discounted to $1400 on Amazon. Throw in another $270 for the keyboard and pen and we're easily answering the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with 5G territory. You know, the one with the M2. This Intel version of the Surface Pro 9 does not support eSIM by the way. For that you'll need to look at the ARM version. Now you might be saying E stop comparing it with the iPad, to which I'd say okay. This is the Tab S9 Ultra with an unbelievable size screen of 14.6 inches. This thing looks so yummy in the screen department that you might want to lick it if you're watching a cooking show. Aside from being an amazing tablet, it's got just as cool keyboard and pen and supports DeX, which for those who haven't heard of, is Samsung slash Android version of Windows that features full keyboard, mouse support and monitor support. This thing starts at $11.99. So for a computer with poor tablet experience and a processor that is slower than the tablets out there, the price should be very different in my opinion. At the very least, I think the signature keyboard and pen should be included in the box because let's be honest, this Surface Pro 9 with no keyboard is just like getting a house with no roof. Currently, in my eyes, the Surface Pro 9 is more like a laptop than a tablet that happens to have a detachable keyboard and pen support. Unfortunately, it is mediocre in all disciplines and my disappointment is not so much software related as it is hardware inspired. Although with the existence of something like the Tab S9, one gets a very interesting perspective in the potential of a morphing operating system. Ironically, something Windows was way ahead way back when. At this point, I'll keep seeking the better two-in-one in the world of Android and iPad tablets until Microsoft ups their ARM game. I'll miss it though. If you want to witness some of my latest iPad OS experiments in a desk setup, check out this video here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.